Good morning. Of course, everything wants to die all at the same moment. Even as I had tested all of this earlier this morning, but we'll make it through it today. Let's begin with our greeting statement. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Just a few announcements as we begin this morning. Uh, Mammoth College are, uh, has its walkout coming up on the 23rd. Uh, this week, Thursday after lunch, uh, in the afternoon in my office, we'll be setting up the little bags that we're going to pass out. So if you've got some items that you want to include in there, some treats, uh, be it cookies or candy bars, uh, I've got our church pens and I'm going to make a little flyer to put in there. Um, but if you'd like to help out putting all that together Thursday afternoon and then on that Monday afternoon, we're going to set up over on the square somewhere, uh, roughly uh, 2.45 or so. So as the college kids walk by, we'll be able to give them each bag uh, of stuff from our church. And uh, it's over in about 10, 20 minutes, however long it takes for them to walk by. How many students are there? They're talking like 350 students walking by. So I've got just a couple bags of candy, so I'll need a lot more to make it work. Uh, but we got some time to figure that out. But Thursday is when we're going to work on that. Then uh, next week, Tuesday, we're going to go return to having our grilling lunch for the high school students. We're going to set up the grills here and invite the high school students to come over and receive a hot dog and a drink or something from us so that they can uh, begin the school year off uh, well in that fashion. So a couple, those are a couple of things that are, are going on. We've got uh, acolyte training coming up next week, uh, uh, the 29th after service. We're going to have our uh, first infant and toddler family uh, class and we're going to have a little cereal bar with that uh, so some fun cereals uh, to go along with that morning uh, so lots of things getting going here as we enter into uh, the fall and uh, obviously all that is in our newsletters that we send out on a weekly basis so uh, look for more information on that as we go along we do have uh, the updated and uh, most current uh, church directories available now and uh, we do have those here in the sanctuary we put up about 10 copies uh, here in the back so as you're heading out today if you want to pick one of those up if you want to call the office this week and have us mail you a copy we will certainly do that as well we'll always make sure there's a few copies uh, here in the sanctuary every week but uh, you can always call in the office and have that mailed to you for whatever information uh, that you need out of that with that, we'll prepare ourselves now for our worship with our prelude music.
invite you to stand as we start fresh today with our moment of confession and hearing God's forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the God of manna, the God of miracles, the God of mercy. Amen. Drawn to Christ and seeing God's abundance, let us confess our sin. God, our provider, help us. It is hard to believe there is enough to share. We question your ways when they differ from the ways of the world in which we live. We turn to our own understanding rather than trusting in you. We take offense at your teachings and ways. Turn us again to you. Where else can we turn? Share with us the words of eternal life and feed us for life in the world. Amen. Beloved people of God, in Jesus, the manna from heaven, you are fed and nourished. By Jesus, the worker of miracles, there is always more than enough. Through Jesus, the bread of life, you are shown God's mercy. You are forgiven and loved into abundant life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let's take a moment now to share a sign of God's peace with those around us. him this morning is, I received the living God.
Kyrie and our hymn of praise are both sung, so join with us now. She has also set her table. She has sent out her servant girls. She calls from the highest places in the town. You that are simple, turn in here. To those without sense, she says, come, eat of my bread and drink of the wine I have mixed. Lay aside immaturity and live and walk in the way of insight. The word of the Lord. The psalm is a reading from Psalm 34. O oh, fear the Lord, you his holy ones, for those who fear him have no want. 
The young lions suffer want and hunger, but those who seek the Lord lack no good thing. Come, O oh children, listen to me. I will teach you the fear of the Lord. Which of you desires life and covets many days to enjoy good? Keep your tongue from evil and your lips from speaking deceit. Depart from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. The word of the Lord. Amen. A reading from Ephesians chapter 5. Be careful then how you live, not as unwise people, but as wise, making the most of the time because the days are evil. So do not be foolish, but understand what the will of the Lord is. Do not get drunk with wine, for that is debauchery, but be filled with the Spirit as you sing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs among yourselves, singing and making melody to the Lord in your hearts, giving thanks to God the Father at all times and for everything in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. The word of the Lord. I invite you to stand for the reading of today's gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the sixth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats of this bread will live forever. And the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. And the leaders of the Jews um, disputed among themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? So Jesus said to them, Very truly, I tell you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood have eternal life, and I will raise them up on the last day. For my flesh is true food, and my blood is true drink. Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood abide in me, and I in them. Just as the living Father sent me, I live because of the Father. So whoever eats me will live because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven. Not like that which your ancestors ate and they died. But the one who eats this bread will live forever. This is the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. One of the things uh, my family has been enjoying has been uh, the movies and the TV shows of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Uh, maybe you've had a chance to see a few of these, you know, Captain America, Iron Man, the Avengers, and, and all of those uh, characters that come with them over the last uh, seven or eight years or however long they've been putting out these movies. And now with a streaming service through Disney, they have new TV shows that they've been putting out. And one of those shows, uh, we just finished watching the first uh, six episodes, which comprised its one first season, focuses on the character of Loki. Loki in the Marvel Cinematic Universe is kind of loosely based on the Loki character of Norse mythology. He's a god, or a being that lives in that godly realm. And he's a trickster, and he's generally unlikable and very much untrustworthy. And his whole premise is that he is irredeemable. You know, usually when you write a story or you're watching a show or you're following along a movie, the bad guy, the one who you realize is causing all the troubles, there's something redeemable about that bad guy. In fact, part of storytelling is telling how someone who appears to be very much so irredeemable actually is redeemable. Well, not so in Loki's case. Everything he does is irredeemable. 
He is always backstabbing even those who he pretends to be allies with. He is always out for his own means. And even when you think he's being trustworthy, he's not. He's just playing the game until he gets what he wants. He's completely irredeemable. And this TV series, over the course of six episodes, is kind of exploring that piece. That there's nothing redeemable about Loki. But over the course of the six weeks of the twists and plots of this TV series, which for those who've watched, you know how those twists and plots goes, and those who are yet to watch it, I won't spoil it, and those who don't know anything about the logic, it won't matter if I spoiled it or not. But there's twists and plots, turns and all that stuff that happens, and we begin to see a transition in this completely irredeemable character to a point where he discovers a higher purpose and redeemability within himself. And of course, that's where this show kind of ends at the end of six episodes, the first season. There's a second season that's coming, and new plot twists will be unraveled, I'm sure, in that next sequence, as we now get to see Loki shift or at least the writers are letting us believe we are seeing a shift in his character. It is fascinating how much art, like fiction that you watch in TVs or read in comic books or read in novels, uh, is a telling of true life stories. Here is someone who is portrayed as irredeemable, but is really portrayed as one seeking a true purpose within his life. He's a character who has life in the sense that he is sentient, he lives, he does things, but does he really have real life? And as the story goes, that's where the irredeemability part of it plays out with this character. Jesus says that in order for us to have real life, we have to eat his bread and drink his blood. Eat his body, drink his blood. Take this bread, take this wine. Then you will have real life. So it makes you stop and think. Well, I'm living life. I don't have to eat any particular meal just to have regular life, right? I wake up every day, I go to work, I go to school, I watch my programs which entertain me, I take in all my hobbies, I have my friends I enjoy, and the life goals that I have set for myself. Is that not life? Much as in a fictional narrative of a character who appears irredeemable, who thinks, ah, why do I need anything more than what I got? My life is good and grand the way it is. Jesus says, no, there's more. There is true life waiting. Uh, true life comes from partaking in what I offer. And it's kind of a lot to, to, to process through all of how the Gospel writer of John uh, puts this, because it's a lot of uh, double speak and a lot of complicated overlays. Uh, we we're talking about bread and, and wine, we're talking about blood and, and body, and uh, this is one of the reasons why early uh, criticisms against the church included uh, accusations of cannibalism. We're not cannibals. Nobody's eating anybody's actual physical flesh. But something Jesus is offering to us matters. And that's the point Jesus is getting across. That in this moment, when we partake of what is his body and his blood through the bread and the wine, something matters. Something changes within us. The first thing it does is it reminds us that no matter what, we are not irredeemable. We don't need a six-episode six TV series to change us from irredeemable to redeemable. God's promise is enough. 
And so coming forward for the sacraments, first in baptism and second here with communion, coming forward for this is God's promise of saying, you are redeemable. You are already in my kingdom, God says. You are already sitting at the table. You already have a place and that place will never be taken away from you. And that's a pretty big deal right then and there. For a long time, and even still in many circles of the church today, there is this belief, this notion, this idea that we have to do something in order to earn a place at God's table, that we have to do something to get us past the door into the kingdom, that we have to do something for Jesus to acknowledge us. But this sacrament flips all that thinking on its head by saying, Haha, I, God, have already welcomed you in. You didn't have a say in this. I did. You belong here for now and for always. So that's the first part of this true life that Jesus is speaking about. That in this moment, we are being absolutely assured of our place that can never be taken away from us. And we didn't do this. God did this through his son, Jesus Christ, for us. But now it also sends us. Right? This is not just a meal that draws us in, it's a meal that sends us out. And the true life that takes us out, takes us out not to return to just normal life, getting up and going about our hobbies and going about hanging out with friends and family and going to work and not thinking too much about the rest of the world. But it sends us out with this knowledge that everywhere we go, we are in God's kingdom, not just here and not just on the last day, but everywhere we go, we're in God's kingdom. And that awareness gives us a new purpose, a new focus, a new attention to life. And that true life is then lived out as we are socially responsible for our neighbors, Socially responsible for our enemies, even, as is exemplified by many other teachings that Jesus offers throughout the Gospels. It's exemplified by the way that we love one another. It's exemplified by the way that we work to upend systems of injustice. It's exemplified in the ways that we offer healings and peace healing sometimes where there's a physical injury, but also healings where there is spiritual or psychological damage that we can bring peace into that situation. This is true life. It's not a life that is all about our own means and our own selves. That's one of the fascinating things about the Loki series. It took us from seeing him as a character who thought only about himself, and by the end of six episodes, he's realizing life is so much more than just himself. And again, we don't need six episodes of a TV show to change our lives. We just come forward with outstretched hands. Open, empty hands that get filled with the wholeness of Christ's body and the wholeness of Christ's blood. The gifts which offer us not only a place at the table, but send us to take that table out into the world. To send us with a new purpose to see the world as God's kingdom, where not only we belong, but all belong. So does this meal matter when we come forward? Absolutely it matters. It absolutely changes who we are. It reminds us always that we have a place in this kingdom forever and that can never be taken away and it sends us to see the world as that very kingdom that we are already a part of. May we go now today 
having received this meal, changed and transformed with the new life, the true life that only Christ can offer. Amen. I invite you to stand as we sing our hymn of the day, What Feast of Love. into God's kingdom, a place where we belong now and always. We get to confess our faith using these words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He is centered into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Rooted in Christ and sustained by the Spirit, we offer our prayers for the Church, the world, and all of creation. God of wisdom, enlighten your Church, guide theologians, biblical scholars, authors, and seminary professors as they seek greater knowledge and invite others into deeper understanding. 
Teach us to ask faithful questions and open our minds to new ideas. God, in your mercy. God of creation, mend the earth, cool warming oceans, and preserve melting ice caps. Increase our awareness of changing climate patterns and reveal new approaches to the ecological challenges we face. Shield those in the path of hurricanes or tropical storms. God, in your mercy. Yeah. God of all nations, direct our leaders. Grant them courage to lay aside political grudges and renew their determination to address difficult conflicts. Guide them in the work of reconciliation. God, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. God of compassion, tend to the wounded. Rescue those tormented by mental illness or mired in addiction. Ease the anxiety of those struggling with dementia. Come quickly to help all who are grieving and all who suffer especially Chris, Bradley, Becky, Josie, Diane, Matthew, Gary, John, Linda, Dave, Jim, Cassie and family, Graham, Joy, Craig, Amber, Julie, Jackson, Chris, Pat, Isla, Charlotte, Evelyn, and Norman and the family and friends of Nancy. God, in your mercy. God of beauty, inspire artists. Bless those whose visual and musical gifts enliven this assembly. Bless the creative work of poets, hymn writers, composers, painters, sculptors, and others that enrich our worship and daily life. God, in your mercy. God of resurrection, bring us to new life. Give us the living bread from heaven through which we abide in your love. And on the last day, raise us with all the saints to eternal life. God, in your mercy. We lift these and all our prayers to you, O God, confident in the promise of your saving love through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now for offerings gathered through many in various ways, given with the spirit of joy and thankfulness, we pray. Jesus, bread of life, you have set this table with your very self and called us to feast on blood. Gather what has been sown among us and strengthen us in this meal. Make us to be what we receive here, your body for the life of the world. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection, opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so, with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn.
merciful Lord, heaven and earth are full of your glory. In great love you sent to us Jesus, your Son, who reached out to heal the sick and the suffering, who preached good news to the poor, and who on the cross opened his arms to all. On the night before he died, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. You may be seated at this time. Let us pray. Jesus, bread of life, we have received from your table more than we could ever ask. As you have nourished us in this meal, now strengthen us to love the world with your own life. I invite you to stand. Bread of life from heaven.
the blessing of God, who provides for us, feeds us, and journeys with us, be upon you now and forever. Amen. Amen. Go in peace. You are the body of Christ. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.